Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a recipe to share with you today. We are getting tons of inspiration from this cookbook called The Silk Road Gourmet by Laura Kelly and we're using it as inspiration for our Silk Road main lesson block for homeschool and today we're going to work on a recipe from Bangladesh. They are kebabs with raisins and mint. Now I make a couple of mistakes here and I want to share them with you and kind of explain how they turn out to be a good thing in the end. So I'm out in my garden and I am going to get some mint. I've got a little herb garden here that is being overrun by some spring flowers. I'm going to take just a huge handful of mint for this recipe. Next I'm going to work on the spices. We do want to marinate the meat to begin with and I'm using 10 cardamom pods. We're going to be splitting those and getting the seeds out of them. So I'm just going to use my mortar and pestle. This is made out of volcanic rock so it's really easy to grind things and it's nice and large which is just right. I'm also going to put in initially a half teaspoon of cinnamon, but that's too much. So I'm going to take about half of it out and leave about a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. To that, I'm going to add 10 cloves. And then to that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of chili flakes and two teaspoons of salt. I've got about half a teaspoon of black peppercorns and four small bay leaves. Next, I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of cumin seeds and about a tablespoon of coriander seeds. And I'm going to grind this up. I am doubling the recipe, but in some cases I didn't double the spices. So I'm going to grind this up and you could use just an electric grinder to do this, but I'm going to use my mortar and pestle. And then later we're gonna put it in the Nutribullet anyway. So I'm going to set this aside and work on the other ingredients for the marinade for the meat. I'm going to use the zest of one lime and then we're going to take those limes and juice them. So I actually use a little bit of the zest of both of those limes. Next we're going to put those into our compost bin and take that juice and put it into our Nutribullet and put that aside and work on the onion. Now I'm altering the recipe just a little bit because I didn't have enough onions for this recipe and I'm using red onions instead. So that's half a red onion into the Nutribullet. I'm going to save those skins for a project and the rest is going to go into my compost bin. Okay, so moving on, we're going to use about two tablespoons of ginger. So I'm going to roughly peel it and then I'm just gonna toss the whole thing into the Nutribullet. And I'm getting just a little bit more because we do like our ginger. So next we're going to blend this using our Nutribullet. We're gonna make a nice paste. And if you're using an entire onion, the way the recipe calls for actually more since we're doubling it, then you're gonna get a nice moist paste in the end. So I've added those spices to the Nutribullet and then we're gonna mix everything up together. And this is going to make the paste that we're going to coat our meat with. Now I did not have ground beef by accident and I had started this whole recipe thinking I did. I had shaved beef instead and it turns out amazing in the end. The texture is wonderful and I actually like it far more than ground beef. So we're going to chill that mixture for about one to four hours. And in the meantime, we're gonna work on the filling for these kebabs. So I'm gonna take that remaining half onion and I'm going to dice it finely. And that's gonna make part of the filling for these meatballs, which is going to be a little bit challenging holding it together. Next, I'm going to add a quarter cup of raisins to that. And then we're going to juice two more limes. And actually the recipe does call for some lemons, but I'm using limes put those in the compost bin for later, and then add that lime juice to the filling. So there's my mint from my backyard, and I'm going to finely chop it up because that's gonna be in our filling. And so I want all of those parts of our filling to be really nicely chopped and finely incorporated. So I'm gonna let that sit for about a half an hour. In the meantime, our meat has been chilled and our filling has been marinating and it's time to make our meatballs. So I'm going to try to sort of make a little hollow in our meat and then sort of bring some more meat around the filling. And I'm sort of just making my way through here, hoping that everything's going to stay together. So I'm just gonna press it together into kind of a ball. And here's this piece of shaved beef that just is perfect for making a little bit of a wrap. And so I don't find any more pieces that are quite that good for the rest of the meatballs. So they're just kind of 
pressed together rather than wrapped together. So I'm going to make about half of them to begin with and I'm going to get my pan nice and hot, a little bit too hot actually right here. And I added some olive oil to that and now we're gonna go ahead and brown them a lot. You can see that that pan is extremely hot. So we wanna brown them on one side and then carefully turn them. This was a little bit challenging to do. I am using my cooking tongs to do this but I think a really small spatula is actually better. Once they're all turned, you can see that we still need to cook them because the inside is not cooked. So I'm going to try just sort of steaming them for about 10 minutes and that works just right. You can see that they're still nicely browned on the outside and they're completely cooked on the inside. So I'm going to begin plating these. These were such a winner. They started getting eaten out of the stove before I was even done plating them. They were so delicious and I paired it with this Indian rice that has coconut, lime, and cashews. It was such an amazing pairing, so delicious that it was completely wiped out for lunch and the kids were like hungry again in a few hours. Like it was so, so delicious that I ended up making it again the following day. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you'd like to check out some of my other cooking tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. That link is also in the description box below. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information and photos. You can find that link down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see what we're eating on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.